Welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time tuning in, I actually do three things to like, comment, and subscribe. I also ask you to hit the notification bell so you're notified every time I upload a video. The reason why I ask you to like, comment, and subscribe is because the more you interact with this video, the more YouTube will promote this video, and this will help us get the gospel of Jesus Christ worldwide. Happy Thursday. I have a couple of questions to ask you. My first question is, how many of us are about to give up? My second question is, how many of us are discouraged because of our past mistakes? And my third question is, how many of us believe God can't use us? Let me submit to you, God can still use you. God will use you. And all you have to be is be available. God knew you were going to make the mistakes. God knew you were going to choose the wrong thing. Even though he knew this, even though he already foresaw it, God still chose you and calls you to impact the world for his glory. So be encouraged. God will still use you through your mess. God will still use you through your dysfunction. God will still use you through your inabilities. God will still use you. Jesus is looking for one thing in order to partner with us. He's not looking for networks. He's not looking for connections. He's not looking for intelligence. He's not looking for skills and talents. He's not looking for the best ideas. The thing that Jesus is looking for is faith. Luke chapter 18. Verse 8 says, I tell you, he will grant justice to them quickly. But when the Son of Man returns, how many will he find on the earth who have faith? So if you want to be used by God, you must have faith. Hebrews 11 verse 6 says, And without faith, it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. No matter what you've been through, God can still use you. He doesn't look at your past. He doesn't look at what you've gone through. He doesn't look at the decisions you make. He looks at the plan and the promises, promises he's already placed inside of you. So just know that God can still use you. In Joshua chapter 2, it talks about the children of Israel on the cusp of entering the promised land. They're about to cross the river Jordan and enter Jericho. But before they do this, Joshua sends two spies to check out the promised land. Here's a point all by itself. Don't try to explore the promised land by yourself. When God gives you a vision, when God gives you a piece on how he's going to use you for his glory, don't keep it to yourself. Tell your trusted friends about it. Hear what I said. I said, tell your trusted friends. I didn't say tell Twitter. Tell those who you have a sacred friendship with, not those who are on your social media platform because a follower does not always translate to a friend. I said it one more time. So a follower does not always translate to a friend. So check out the promised land with your friends. Joshua chapter 2 verse 1 to 7 says, Then Joshua, son of Nun, secretly sent out two spies from Shittim, Go look over the land, he said, especially Jericho. So they went to enter the house of a prostitute named Rahab and stayed there. The king of Jericho was told, look, some Israelites have come here tonight to spy out the land. So the king of Jericho sent out this message to Rahab. Bring out the men who came to you and entered your house because they have come to spy out the whole land. But the women had had taken the two men and hidden them. She said, yes, the men came to me, but I don't know where they came from. At dusk, when it was time to close the city gate, they left. I don't know which way they went. Go after them quickly. You may catch up with them. But she had taken them up to the roof and hidden them under the stalks of flax. She had laid out on the roof. So the men set out in their pursuit of the spies on the road that leads to the forest of the Jordan. And as soon as the pursuers had gone out, the gate was shut. What do you do when the opportunity to abandon being faithful comes to your doorstep? Rahab had the opportunity to abandon the way God was using her. My question for you is, how many of us have abandoned the way God was using us so we can get more visibility? How many of us have ab abandoned the way God was using us so people can recognize our gifts and our talents? How many of us have abandoned the way God was using us because we saw our friends getting more accolades and be more recognized? How many of us have abandoned the way God was using us? I'm here to tell you right now that the opportunity will always present itself to abandon abandon your faithfulness. So the decision is yours. Will you abandon your faithfulness or will you remain faithful till the end? And I'm well aware 
that people have turned being faithful into a situation that is so toxic and a breeding ground for spiritual abuse. I'm not talking about that situation. If you're being spiritually abused, you should ask the Lord what next step you should take and proceed with those steps. But what I'm talking about is always leaving your place of faithfulness because no one tells you good job or no one pats you on the back. I'm here to tell you right now, men will always disappoint you, but God will never disappoint you. I say that one more time. Men will always disappoint you, but God will never disappoint you. That's why we're faithful to God and not faithful to man. Colossians chapter 3 verse 23 to 24 says, whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the inheritance as your reward. You are serving the Lord Christ. So when God is using you, it requires faithfulness. The question I want you to ask yourself is, am I faithful? Because in Joshua chapter 2, even though Rahab had the king on her back, she remained faithful. Can you remain faithful even though culture is on your back telling you you need to leave and go and go get recognized? Can you remain faithful through the battle? Can you remain faithful through the disappointment? Can you remain faithful through the distrust? Can you remain faithful? Joshua chapter 2 verse 8 to 9 says, Before the spies laid down for the night, she went up on the roof and said to them, I know that the Lord has given you this land. And that's that a great fear of you has fallen on us, so that all who live in this country are melting in fear because of you. Did Rahab remain faithful because she recognized the God who is fighting for the Israelites? Sometimes the reason we do not remain faithful is because we forget the God we serve. We forget about the God who restored us. We forget about the God who delivered us. We forget about the God who set us free. We forgot about that God. But let me remind you right now, he is the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. He is the same God. So if you are in the middle of abandoning faithfulness, remember that God is the same God. Joshua chapter 2. Verse 10 to 11 says, We have heard how the Lord dried up the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt. And what you did to Shion and Og, the two kings of Amorites, the east of the Jordan, whom you completely destroyed. And when we heard of it, our hearts melted in fear, and everyone's courage fell because of you. For the Lord your God is God in heaven above and on the earth below. Let me tell you right now why you're on this journey of God using you. God's reputation precedes you. That's why you can go in confidence to wherever God is calling you to, even though you've never been there before. You should go in there confidently. You should go there boldly because God's reputation precedes you. Joshua chapter 2, verse 12 to 16 says, Now then, please swear to me by the Lord that you will show kindness to my family because I have shown kindness to you. Give me a sure sign that you will spare the lives of my father and my mother, my brothers and my sisters, and all who belong to them, and that you will save us from death. Our lives for your lives, the man assured her. If you don't tell what we are doing, we will treat you kindly and faithfully when the Lord gives us the land. So she let them down by a rope. Through, a, through the window, for the house she lived in was part of the city wall. She, she said to them, go, in, go to the hills so the pursuers will not find you. Hide yourselves there for three days until they return, and then go on your way. When God uses you, it's not only about you. What if through your faithfulness, God wants to bring freedom to your family? What if through your faithfulness, God wants to bring success to the business that you work at? What if through your faithfulness, God wants to bring people back to himself through salvation? What if your faithfulness is bigger than you? Joshua chapter 2, verse 17 and 21 says, Now the men have said to her, This oath you made us swear will not be binding on us unless we enter the land. You have tied this scarlet cord in the window through which you let us down. And unless you have brought your father and mother, your brothers and, your fam and all your family into your house, if any of them go outside into the streets, their blood will be on their own heads. We will not be responsible. As for those who are in the house with you, their blood will be on our head if a hand 
is laid on them. But if you tell what we're doing, we will be released from the oath you made us swear. Agreed, she replied. Let it be as you say. So she sent them away and they departed and she tied the scarlet cord in the window. When God uses you, you always have to agree to the terms and conditions. I don't know what you heard. You can't have it your way and have it God's way. You will always have to agree to the terms and conditions. God will never force you to be used by him. God will never force you to be faithful. He will show you the promises that is attached to your faithfulness, but he will never force you to be faithful to him. Let's jump to Joshua chapter 6 verse 22 to 25. This is when the Israelites just invaded Jericho. Verse 22 says, Joshua said to the two men who have spied out the land, go into the prostitute's house and bring her out and all who belong to her in accordance with your oath to her. So the young men who had done the spying went in, brought out Rahab, her father and mother, her brothers and sisters, and all who belonged to her. They brought out her entire family and put them in a place outside the camp of Israel. Like I said before, your faithfulness does not only affect you. So if this is true about faithfulness, why do we think that our unfaithfulness only affects us? I'm here to tell you right now that both faithfulness and unfaithfulness affects more than us. If we continue with verse 24, it says, Then they burned the whole city and everything in it. They put the silver and gold and the articles of bronze and iron in the treasury of the Lord's house. But Joshua spared Rahab the prostitute with her family and all who belonged to her because she hid the men Joshua had sent as spies to Jericho and she lives among the Israelites to this day. She got engrafted into, the God, into God's chosen people because she allowed God to use her. What's crazy about the whole thing is that Rahab is mentioned in the hall of faith that's in Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 31 says, by faith, Rahab the prostitute did not perish with those who were disobedient because she had given a friendly welcome to the spies. She did not know that she was going to play a vital part in salvation for the whole world. Rahab is mentioned in the genealogy of Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 1. If you go to Matthew chapter 1 verse 5 and 6 says, Salmon, the father of Boaz, whose mother was Rahab, Boaz, the father of Obed, whose mother was Ruth, Obed, the father of Jesse, and Jesse, the father of King David, and David, the father of Solomon, whose mother had been Uriah's wife. If you jump down to verse 16, it says, And Jacob, the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary, and Mary was the mother of Jesus, who is called the Messiah. Because Rahab decided to remain faithful, God used her to enact change in the world. Despite her mistakes, despite her fault flaws, this, despite everything she'd been through, she did not allow that to stop God from using her. Let me encourage you right now, do not let your shortcomings, do not let your past mistakes, do not let your lack of resources keep you from being used by God. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. I upload every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. And I don't want you to miss out of any of the great content coming from this channel. If you have any prayer requests, put in the comment section below. If you feel led to support this ministry, the given information is in the description box below. I love you. God bless you. And I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching this video. If you want more content, subscribe over here and watch the next video over there. God bless you.